Hey everybody, this is Kevin at Potter USA, and today we are going to do another segment of what we've been calling Andy's necklace. And it's a really pretty necklace that one of our employees designed, and it uses these flower and leaf stamps. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to make some jump rings and I'm gonna link some of it together. I like to use these as a, as a mandrel to wind around. It's a transfer punch set. I use this to wrap my wire around. I actually make a tool to do this, but I'm not trying to sell you a tool, so we're just gonna do it the old fashioned way. If you're interested though, it's the coil cutter. So what you do, just wind it around. Try to keep your the coil nice and tight. Okay, so I've got about this many. So I just set this on my bench pin, and I know there's a bunch of jigs and fixtures that people have come up with to make this easy. I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way. The reason we saw cut these jump rings, if you cut them with a pair of pliers or a pair of uh, flush cutters, you're gonna, have a, you're gonna have pointed ends and your jump rings are just gonna look sloppy. Okay, so the next step is to decide where you want to put your jump rings. My jump rings are a little on the large size, on the large side, but I figure this is a beginning project and I would use a larger jump ring because they're easier to solder. And if we make them really tiny, a lot of times people will get frustrated and they will mess up their jump rings. I'm gonna solder two jump rings to my flower. I'm going to hold it from the very bottom so it doesn't act as a heat sink. And I'm going to solder that right onto there. Going to, we're going to go with high solder. So warm your piece up first. That way it's sticky. And do yourself a favor, solder it at the joint. I'm going to put it on like this. There it is. Okay. So we're going to put, the reason we're using high solder because we got a solder on the other side. So I'm going to actually use my solder block as a backstop because I don't want my part to fall off. Okay. Don't want to touch your solder block too much because it's going to uh, move. So, these are on the flower now. And I personally think they look kind of bulky, so I'm going to actually squish them. Now on this one, I'm actually going to not solder it closed because I want to actually open the jump ring up. So do yourself a favor and put your jump ring on the other side. So since I'm using, since my soldering board is kind of, it's going to act as a heat sink, I am kicking up the torch a little bit, giving it a little more firepower. Okay, so. We're gonna open up our jump rings and attach. I tend to like to use these little tiny soldering boards or even just the back of a crucible so that, because I see people with these giant soldering boards and what it becomes is a giant scrap yard of mess. And I've tried to limit myself by having just a small soldering board because I'll make a mess. So if you are a complete novice, don't torture yourself with super small jump rings. We want you to complete the project and actually have something, not just a pile of melted parts. I admit my jump rings are a little large, but I'm doing it so that everybody can see how it's done. The final video that you'll see we may 
I think I kind of want to do it. I want to put a few small stones in the side of the flowers and I'll show you how to make the clasp. And then we'll oxidize it, patina it, polish it, and should call, we'll be done with it. So thanks for watching.